Hi there! Welcome to our daily manna. Just as our body is in need of material food, so as our soul is in need of the word of the Lord. So we pray. Lord, we humbly come into your presence and we pray that you will endow us the wisdom, the wisdom that comes from your word, the wisdom that comes from the Almighty God. Lord, we pray that you will continue to guide us, illumine us with the work of your Holy Spirit and with the work of your word. We say this in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. There was once a time that I was having a conversation with a friend, and this person was known to be very prayerful. He was brought by his family to Manila to treat some physical ailment that he was going through back then. When he had his checkup with a doctor, the doctor told him that he needed to go through an operation. But he wrestled in his heart and mind, shall I really go through the operation? And he kept on praying to the Lord, asking God, will I go through the operation? And so, after a few days, he was convinced by the rest of his family that they will really have to go to the hospital and he shall submit for the operation. And so he conformed to them. While they were in the car, on the way to the hospital, he continued praying to the Lord. He continued asking God, Lord, what is really, what is your will for me? What do you desire for me? Because if you would just tell me that I won't go there and submit for operation and just fully rely on what, on what you can do, just fully rely on the sustaining grace that you have, then I will submit to your will. Now what happened was that while they were on the road, he kept on praying and praying when suddenly he saw a Bible verse written on the wall. And when he read the verse, his heart was touched and he took it as a counsel from the Almighty God as he was, as it was also impressed by the Holy Spirit deep within him. So there was a verse that he read and there was the impression of the Holy Spirit in his heart. Right at that moment, when he read the verse, he told his companions inside the car, Let's stop and please turn around. We are going back home. I'll go back to Sambuanga City. And so he did not submit for an operation. And you know what? He lived for many, many, many years. Now, that's kind of amazing to think about that such a person has a faith in God who is um, seriously taking the counsel of the Lord. You know, God's counsel can come from anywhere, from anybody, at any time. During those days in the early history of Christianity, when you look at the book of Acts chapter 5, the believers were persecuted. The religious leaders didn't like the Christians, especially when they continued to proclaim Jesus Christ, that He was resurrected, and that many people started believing in the Lord the religious leaders didn't like the idea, and so they, they reprimanded God's people to stop preaching about the resurrected Christ. In fact, there was one time that they put them behind bars just because they were preaching the gospel. Now, after that in experience, after that incident, they were never stopped by these individuals because as I have told you in the previous episode from the book of Acts, that the disciples told the religious leaders, we rather obey God than man. So their allegiance is really for the Lord. So they continued preaching the gospel. They continued proclaiming the resurrected Christ to the rest of the people that they would encounter. Nobody was able to stop them. However, as they were going through all of these matters, as they were preaching the good news about Christ, you know what happened? The religious leaders continued to pursue them. The religious leaders continued to inflict them with pain and suffering. And this time, they were caught again and they were brought, they were brought before a council. And in that council, they were going through some interrogation. And by the way, I call this episode of the Daily Mana as Gamalielism. Because there, though there is no such a word like that in the dictionary, but because this is the name of the guy, Gamaliel, that gave the counsel to the disciple, to the, the rest of the people, then I got his name and I call, call his wisdom 
Gamaliel Liza. Let's read it from the book of Acts chapter 5, beginning with verse 33 up to verse 39. It says here, But when they heard this, they were cut to the quick and intended to kill them. But as far a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law respected by all the people, stood up in the council and gave orders to put the men outside for a short time. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take care that you propose what you take care what you propose to do with this man. For some time ago, Judas rose up claiming to be somebody, and a group of about 400 men joined up with him. But he was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After this man, Judas, Judas of Galilee rose up in the days of the census and drew away some people after him. He too perished, and all those who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I say to you, stay away from these men and let them alone for this. For if this plan or actions is of men, it will be overthrown. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them, or else you may even be found fighting against God. Now Gamaliel gave this counsel before the religious leaders and some Jewish people who were also listening as the disciples were interrogated. But I think his counsel was really so brilliant. That's why I called this episode Gamalielism. Now, what was his counsel about? His counsel came in two parts. The first part of it had to do with, I call it, the counsel about responsibility. Why did I say it's a counsel about responsibility? When you look at verse 35, he said, Men of Israel, take care what you propose to do with this man. Why was he saying take care? Because if they would do something unjust before them, they are to be held responsible for any decision that they will make, for any action that they will do or that they would inflict to the disciples, to the followers of Jesus Christ. And this is a counsel that you and I need to take day by day. Because in every decision we make, every action that we would, we would do, every word that we would say, we are held accountable for anything that, we would, that would be coming from us. So let us be very careful. Let's take this counsel of Gamaliel so seriously because we are accountable. We are responsible to him. And another counsel that he gave is found in verse 38 when he said, so in the present case, I say to you, stay away from these men and let them alone. For if the plan of act or action is of men, it will be overthrown. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them or else you may even be found fighting against God. The first counsel had to do with responsibility. One is being held responsible and accountable for everything that he would choose, say, and do. But the second counsel of Gamaliel is of important, equal, equally important. Why? Because this has to do with the counsel about authority. Here, Gamaliel perceived God as the highest authority. And if these, if these disciples were actually doing the will of God, then these religious leaders and the rest of the Jewish people they were going against the authority of God. These two are very important and they come together. The counsel about being responsible or the counsel about the concept of responsibility and the counsel about the concept of authority who is no other than God himself. So in our day-to-day -day life, may we take this Gamalielism, the counsel of Gamaliel, to the religious leaders and to the rest of the Jewish people before they took action, before they made a decision, before they said anything toward them. He gave them the counsel about responsibility and authority. May we all be very careful in everything that we say, everything that we decide, everything that we do. Why? Because we are responsible for it. And added to that, we are under the authority of the Almighty God. So may this wisdom continue to guide us day by day. And I am praying that we will live under the wisdom of God's divine revelation. God bless you.